Hey, greetings to the body of the people. We are live on Facebook. We are live on Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to the people of God. We've got a lot to cover. We've got David Dotrieve and Clifford Everhart on the call right now, on the line right now, I should say. And uh, we'll just get right underway with the um, uh, topic of tonight's show and uh, what we're going to discuss uh things have been going crazy where i am here in richmond virginia and it looks like they're going crazy all over the united states and really all over the world uh there's anarchy on the street uh literally i mean literally there is no law and order in any way not that there ever really was but uh there was a pre pretense uh, there was a pretend uh, element of law and order. We'll, we'll get into that because I, I can tell you, um, as somebody who is, I mean, had their businesses robbed and looted uh, in the city of Richmond, Virginia, um, over the years, it's not like it's a rare thing. And the cops are always covering it up, uh, screwing up, um, putting in danger anyone that may be around the actual crime, despite their exact descriptions of of who it is that's committing the crime. And I'll tell a little story, might as well start out with it, uh, about that, about the police putting individuals in danger waiting 30 45 minutes to show up during an active break-in on main street i'll tell you i i used to um uh have a retail store at 2400 west main street in richmond virginia it is it used to be a a fashionable and expensive part of town it probably still is despite the fact that there's tr- it's trashed and that there are angry mob protests blocking the roads in that uh in that carry town slash fan section of richmond virginia but in any event one night after i after i left my store uh it was broken into i guess early in the morning between like 3 and 4 a.m. And um, the neighbor across Stafford Street, right at the corner of Maine and Stafford in Richmond, Virginia, uh, called because the these individuals were bashing a reinforced glass door in with, uh, with uh, um, garden edgings, the center, you know, small, uh, round at the top garden edgings, but mostly with their feet and their fists. So they started bleeding everywhere around the, uh, uh, the store. And then they kept going in and out for 45 minutes. Not, they didn't have any bags or anything. They were just carrying it, uh, in their shirts or in their arms uh, carrying stuff. Um, there's no money. There really wasn't any way to, uh, I guess, uh, it, you know, resell the the products that that they were stealing. And they, you know, once you have one, I mean, it, it was it was not well thought out. It was not a well thought out plan to do anything. And these individuals left their cell phone with uh, pictures of them committing other crimes uh, on it at the scene of the crime with fingerprints with their blood all over the phones. So this was not a brilliant thing. This is at 2400 West Main Street. Um, And uh, basically the police show up. They're given an exact description and eyewitnesses on the phone. This is probably 2006, 
2007, 2008, between 2007 and 2009. I mean, there's court records. You know, I, I got an insurance claim off of all the stolen and damaged property. There was a court case. The guys got caught eventually, eventually. But what happened was they were given an exact description. The police tackled the wrong individual who was out walking his dog. The dog ran away and almost got hit by a police car. And uh, eventually, these individuals were found in an apartment uh, about a block down because they were given an exact description of what they were doing, where they were stashing the stolen merchandise from, I mean, I don't know, I can't say it's, it's my, my, an LLC that I created owned that store. Leon LLC. So again, other folks might say I owned that store. It was my store. I paid outrageous rent. I paid taxes to the state up until the point where I started refusing to pay taxes. Uh, but in any event, and I, I told them I was doing that. I, I chased off many, many uh, uh, Virginia uh, um, uh, extortion artists. But in any event, I'm just telling you that that they they you know a a you know Clifford David and I would have done a better job of of uh capturing these criminals than these cops did eventually they got them uh i they they just left the door broken down you know i didn't find out till the next morning and uh um Blood was all over the place, and I heard about all this from the neighbor, and, uh, you know, I basically was like, look, I just want my money back. I'm not interested in these guys, you know, sitting in the Richmond City Jail. They just have to freaking pay me back, pay me to repair everything, and pay me back what they owe me. I don't give it, you know, I don't, I don't care. I don't care at that point, but I did say, hey, look, uh, here's the telephone, like, I saw what's on it. This is probably evidence. This is, you know, I know my this stuff from experience. You know, you'll never know unless it's unless it's experience. So I turned in the phone. Now, these guys evidently, you know, nothing happened to them. They were associated, their parents were police officers or at least one of them uh was. Uh they they didn't charge that guy with anything, even though he was on the scene. James Naismith, I remember. I mean, it was like, uh, anyway, uh, Naismith, I, I believe, was the last name of that guy. Um, but in any event, again, there's court records. This was this is well documented, and uh, um, and and so basically, you know. The phone was turned in. I didn't turn in the phone, but, you know, somebody who found the phone while they were, like, helping me clean up the store, they turned in the phone, turned turned in the phone. And by the time I talked to the Commonwealth's attorney, uh, Rody, he basically said, what phone? I'm like, the phone with the pictures on it? You know, Naismith's phone? Who's Naismith? Oh, yeah, that's right. The The cop's, you know, child that you didn't, you didn't charge, but in any event, I got the money back. It's just, the point is that that there was a in the city of Richmond, which thank God I'm out of. Uh, William Smith, who used to get paid to follow me to work, and uh, uh, there's plenty of video of me and William Smith, and and the guy he replaced, Alfred Durham, me confronting them for their treason and in many different ways uh, while I'm armed, um, and so. Uh, William Smith is replaced. He's the white scapegoat in all this because we're discussing race war agenda. We're discussing the the white genocide agenda and this, on this absurd thing they're calling Juneteenth. It's like June nineteenth. There's no no such thing as Juneteenth. That's not a that's not a word. Teenth is not a word. Um. It's something one adds to another word to represent a number, but it, but in any event, 
uh, William Smith was the white scapegoat. So it turns out that the new police chief, Jody Blackwell, has been a police officer who was shot and killed what seems to be an innocent person. So uh, here's the story. On Idlewood Avenue back in 2002, there was a call, and I'll see. I'll, I'll show you how the stories connect. There was a call for a robbery in progress. Say, same that happened at the, you know, uh, a retail store I ran, owned by the LLC I created. So, this had a deadly ending, and the new police chief back in 2002. Uh, got in a wrestling match with someone who was not involved with the robbery at all and ended up shooting and killing him. Now, what? how this guy got away with it was that he planted a gun or somebody else from the Richmond Police Department planted a gun. Nowhere near the event, my guess is. they So stupid, they couldn't remember the exact spot. It was somehow found out what the exact spot was through other forensic evidence or what they couldn't uh, cover up. I mean, they they like to lie just because that that puts out confusion. But that Jody Blackwell shot and killed a male that that had nothing to do with the uh, uh, with the attack, and um, and then they planted a gun that didn't have any fingerprints on it, much less match the suspect. And then this guy, Jody Blackwell, who's the new police chief, then says, oh, I confronted this guy and he pulled a gun on me. So I don't believe it went down that way at all because no prints on the gun. The guy that's shot and killed by the new police chief that allegedly was hired in order to, what, combat all the murders that the Richmond Police Department are carrying out against against, uh, persons on the street. So, so, I mean, I have experience in this. Uh, You know, when when they say something, that's not like how it happened. So basically, it's like, yeah, we got a call, and we showed up, and we apprehended it. You know, the neighbor says, yeah, these guys were idiots. I told them it was not the right guy that they tackled, not the guy walking the dog. They tackle him. I mean, thank God they didn't shoot him because because then they would have planted a gun on that guy. They would have killed his dog and they would have stated that this is the guy who broke in and let the other guys go. Like that's how they operate. That's what they do. I, you you can you can be ignorant to this. You cannot be ignorant to the, that this fact. I don't know what to tell you because I know what happens because I videotape it and I've experienced it to the point where it's like, yeah, everybody knows this is what happened. You know, back before videotape, you know, there were certain certain things you could trust beyond a shadow of a doubt. And that is the cops lying and you going like, yeah, well, their story can't possibly be true. So when I start asking about the cell phone left by Naismith at the scene with blood, DNA evidence, covered with fingerprints, and then these guys, all of them, committing other crimes, drugs on scales, these idiots posing with like, you know, maybe like, like 820s or something that they, that they, not much money, maybe a few hundred bucks. And like they're posing with the money. Then it shows them like buying buying freaking spray paint. And then it shows them doing graffiti. So so in any event, you know, I would not be surprised if the police put them up to that, but at least the police covered this up because when I when I inquired about the cell phone and this individual, I'm told by Commonwealth Attorney Rody. What cell phone? Uh, the cell phone that we found at the scene of the crime with their fingerprints all over it and DNA and pictures of other crimes? Uh, no, nothing like that. Okay, you're a, you're a freaking liar. You're a liar. 
and uh, uh, Naismith. Uh, who's Naismith? Uh, he was the guy that that was a, a ri- originally arrested at the scene, whose name has disappeared, whose whose father is a cop. Okay, okay, that's how it works. That's how it works. Don't believe any of it. I, I mean, I must say, it's all a fraud. All of it. All of it. So don't ever believe any of it. No matter what side, no matter who's saying it, the new police chief in the city of Richmond murdered somebody. <clears throat> Excuse me. And they're telling us They're telling us that this is to what? Keep uh, keep police brutality down. You can't. Then you can't hire somebody as police chief who who's murdered somebody. And and <clears throat> I mean, obvious mockery. But like surprising that it would be this obvious. And 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 another thing is. You know, they, they they keep giving these caveats about, oh, the cops are shooting. Oh, there was no gun. Oh, they were, they were, they were unarmed. It's not illegal to be armed in America. So, so again, this stuff, it, it's, it's getting crazy to the point where you got to just choose one thing or another. Either one worships the government and thinks the government is your god then then admit it Ad, admit it and and say that's it or you say no i, I know that government is a two dimensional creation of man and i don't trust it and there are <clears throat> the majority of persons the majority of human beings are not good they can't be trusted and that these are the individuals Excuse me. These are the individuals that are controlling the guns, the jails, the money, uh, and and doing things that no government has the ability to do. Um, limit one's access to their God-given rights of of uh, self-defense and and to their right to believe what they wish to believe. And also, above all, the right to gather, the right to congregate, the right of free association. I mean, I, I don't mean, I, 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 I got to stop. Do, there, all freedom is taken away. All freedom is taken away when they say you have no freedom of association anymore. You have to think a certain way. You're subject to these individuals, these murderous psychopaths with guns. And when they carry out a crime, when they murder somebody, it's going to be covered up. And then when we finally, you know, uh, pretend that, that there's a public outrage against this, we hire someone uh, as the person in charge of the police, which is the reason why allegedly all these government shills and agents, these these communist Antifa, and, and also the police, obviously working together, uh, you know about police brutality, and then they hire somebody as police chief who has murdered someone in cold blood on the street. I'm referencing Jody Blackwell and. In, in Richmond, Virginia, and and again, <clears throat> what what's new? And then to frame the he yeah, and then and then a bad attempt to frame the person he he murdered, and he didn't do that alone, because you know that's what they do. They go up in cover up mode. That's well, that's is their. Actually saying they're a good cop? Is anyone actually saying that and earnestly believes it at this point? I don't think so. I, 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 you know, I'll tell you what we saw here yesterday. What we saw here yesterday is 
the cop side of the story when it comes to these protesters that are that are um I don't even know what the hell they're doing. Allegedly a chemical uh you know there's just standoffs and then you know uh like some staged thing happens and there's some sort of predetermined uh like kickoff point where an agent provocateur crosses the you know runs across the freaking police line they grab that person i mean i see it over and over again they used to kick this off by some agent provocateur coming in wearing a mask some undercover cop wearing a mask and then they go oh we tackle them do a whole big thing uh you know because they're wearing a mask and then stuff kicks off but in any event it kicks off both sides are in on kicking it off because they're all you know whoever's kicking it off in the protester side there's never somebody brave or stupid enough to just do that on their own in, in those in those crowds or else it would just be nonstop fighting between the police and and the protesters so they have to like kick something off. They have to act, the cops have to act like, well, we were reacting to this. So that's why we put out the tear gas. That's why we alleged, you know, so now there's dueling things. So like somebody says that they got hit by a rubber bullet in the neck. Then the police say, we don't use that. And I'm like, is that real? Like, is that what would happen if you got hit with a rubber bullet in the neck? Like, you know, they're denying it. And then the cops come out and say, oh, a chemical agent just got uh, uh, just got sprayed on. You know, I thought it was a bottle of water, but it was a chemical agent. I went to a doctor and they're like, yeah, you 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 got uh, what doctor you got hit by a chemical, you know, weapon or something. And the guy allegedly had a, a rash. And, and he's like, yeah, I was given oral steroids and uh, um, told to put hydrocortisone on it. I'm like, yeah, that's that's with every rash. You know, we wouldn't need we don't need doctors for that. But basically, it looked like maybe the freaking, you know, face stuff that he was wearing, you know, was causing his rash. But in any event, they act like the, the protesters are now putting out uh, chemical weapons against the cops. So that's that's their angle as far as talking about, you know, how these guys are or are not just total scumbags, you know, uh, you know, doing an easy job. That that was the assertion. That was the assertion last night. Yeah. I I don't know. I really think it's it's like you know if, if that if that were the case, I would think it would be like a much bigger like national story. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, Matthew Collins. Here's the other thing. It's it's fitting in with this narrative about uh, them allegedly putting bleach in the sodas of uh, of New York uh, uh, in New York City at Shake Shack. Um. I heard about the poisoning. I, I didn't hear it was bleach. I heard about that poisoning. But again, I, like if those were real stories, like why why are they disappearing? Like, you know, and if that's the case, like, you know, shouldn't that be addressed that there's a percentage like like everyday individuals like they they wish to like attack the cops with chemical weapons I'm not doing it. I I really wouldn't do that to anyone. Um, but you yeah, right now the cops are the, the the narrative right now is is defund the police. And look, it's it's not hard to predict. Excuse me, it's not hard to predict things to come these days. Um, what I mean by that is you watch how right now everybody's saying defund the police, these government opposition groups, 
pretty soon when school's back in session, they're going to create false flag events, uh, just just like where we see some of these uh, alleged militia members are shooting at uh, individuals for taking down statues. They're going to escalate that and, mm-hmm. and uh, throw in some more school shootings. Right. And those same group that say defund the police are going to be the ones talking about the police are the only ones to have guns. Well, that's true, and I'll point out something else, because we, we already brought up the fact that human beings are being replaced in, in all jobs by machines, in all industries, I should say, including including what, the cops. Uh, uh, but I can tell you, when I, when I was looking into, into that story about how Jody Blackwell, the new police chief in Richmond, murdered... And a, uh, uh, a a innocent individual on the streets, um, yeah. Hey, uh, there's some there's a staticky thing coming through, and um, if you can't hear on on uh, on Facebook, go to BlogTalkRadio.com. If you can't hear the callers, it's it, David. Can you or Clifford? Can you put a link in the uh? uh in the comment section here on Facebook. So if folks can't hear this, is, we're broadcasting the feed um, from blog talk radio onto Facebook. Yeah. Oh, oh, repeat. Yeah. Go ahead. Repeat that cliff. If you could, please. Okay, so it's live on Facebook. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So it's live on on uh, on uh, Facebook here, uh, or Instagram here, live on Instagram, live on Facebook, and live on Blog Talk Radio. Anyway, there's lots of different ways to see it every week. Beyond that, so. Um, in any event, <laughs> okay, we were talking about the the police getting replaced by robots, drones, uh, AI. But when I was looking at this article about Jody Blackwell murdering someone on the street and allegedly having to be hired because it's white cops, this this guy's a black, you know, a, an African American, a a, a a black man. So it's most, they're, they're saying, you know, oh, it's white cops. Now the police chief that's in charge, alleged replacing the white, I mean, like, as far, I mean, this guy, William Smith, he's a real dirtbag. I mean, he's a real scumbag, like lowest waste of oxygen on the planet. But like, he's like, you know, maybe as far as like being like dirty amongst like a filthy pile of garbage, you know, he's not the worst. This guy, he he never killed anyone. He never shot anyone, or at least it's not widely known the fact that this guy just gunned down somebody on the street. William Smith never did that. But this other guy did. So David was referencing that they're, that they're gonna, you know, like, um, defund the police, then there's going to be a bunch of like false flags created. And I'll tell you why, because at the bottom of that article, I'll tell you, they're going to defund the police, but I'll tell you who's hiring. I've seen folks post about this on, on Facebook, how they see everywhere that's advertised everywhere. FEMA is hiring. FEMA is hiring. How many of you have seen that? I see that everywhere I go on the internet. FEMA is hiring. FEMA is hiring. They're the only ones hiring. So they're going to defund the police and all these cops are going to get jobs at FEMA. So basically, I'll tell you that this is another reset and we're only going to be giving all of these cops that are out of the job a pay raise to work for FEMA directly on Agenda 21 and the police aren't going anywhere in any city, state, or town, you'll just be 
you know, approached by like, you know, those DARPA dogs wearing a freaking police outfit, you know, uh, 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 you know, with the kitted out with the automatic weapons, laser beams, you know, tasers, whatever. Um, I mean, that's, that's the way it's going to go. Uh, I mean, just getting the people's acceptance of it. I mean, it's, it's that plain and simple because uh, how many articles have we also seen where, uh, the, the whole George Floyd movement, his family is calling for the UN to step in. I mean, the UN is brought to you by FEMA or FEMA is brought to you by the UN, vice versa. Certainly, certainly. Um, yeah, I mean it's agenda 21, it's obvious, it's what we have we what we have been saying forever. A- and we told you how to stop it. So, for example, you know, when I'm going to a meeting or when we're, you know, confronting the police and I say, "Okay, like, you know, this is how to do it. Like, you got to stand behind them with a gun." You know, when I and do it lawfully, I'm like, yeah, this is completely within the law. And and this is why, because we they are servants that they're this government, as as we stated at at the beginning of the broadcast, you're you're in two camps right now. One that believes that government is your God and that you worship it and that you are just going to like stay in a fetal position or lash out at the exact wrong thing um, regarding how to stand up to it or how to respond to this police state in which it just keeps getting worse and worse. More and more of your rights are taken away. I I really don't know what folks are. I mean, especially younger, younger uh, uh, people than myself what do you like what's the purpose of your life like i remember even when i was younger i was i was warped as far as like you know having my priorities straight but man i i used to you know I, i'll work just just to have enough money to like you know you know get some beer and like go go to the football game you know or you know like go down you know go out to the to the river and and like chill out and like listen to music and like relax and hang around with with other other people you know warped priority i i could have been doing much but you know if that's what you like if you live for enjoyment of life where where's your enjoyment if you like watching sports there's there's really no sports if you like going to like concerts or or like if it's if you if you're more well adjusted and you like going to church and uh uh or just being around Can other you answer your question? Go go ahead. I think well one answer is we discussed this earlier things like OnlyFans and I mean just and video games. I mean just degradation at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. Somebody says their enjoyment is TikTok. Yeah. Okay, I get it. I mean, hey, I, I watch a lot of a lot of TV, a lot of movies, you know. But I mean, I'm spending most of my time, and, and again, th- this is my choice. It's what I get my enjoyment out of. Yeah, I don't like it. If I felt safe to do things, my my life would be very different. I'm not safe, and I I started, you know, avoiding the public as a result of the backlash that I encountered, um, you know, being beat up, hospitalized, threatened by the Secret Service, Department of Homeland Security, FBI, Richmond Police, uh, I mean, ev- every police, Virginia State Police, Virginia State Capitol Police. Federal Reserve Bank police. I, I mean, I could go on and on about about why I go like, okay, you know, but I'm fighting and striving, not not saying I, you know, 
you know, my example that I'm like a great individual for doing this. I'm just saying what I'm doing is my wish is to end this. So at a certain point, you know, life can resume as, as normal and as intended for Americans and therefore the people of the world, because we're your only hope. The, the American people are the only hope of the world. It's just the way it is. It's, it's that simple. And that's what I'm, I'm fighting for. But hey, I, I'm not I'm not going on any uh, you know intentional suicide missions, and I can tell you, it's like I, I've already done it. I've been out on the street. I, I'm showing you who's doing these riots in in Richmond, Virginia, and in your town. I'm identifying the networks, and you know you want to say the Antifa is just like a catch all. But a lot of this is Workers World Daily. They're always doing this. They've been doing it and they've had this plan to, to be put in action. They were very patient about it because they're in on UN Agenda 21. Because who runs that? Not black people. Not black, you know, not black people. They're not the ones running this Workers World Daily who's behind this Antifa movement. I mean, we know the networks. What are the networks? They go, oh, it's George Soros. Okay. W- what are the nonprofits that they launder their money through? Uh, National Endowment for Democracy, Tides Foundation, um, Ford Foundation. So then find out what those organizations, which are CIA fronts, which is nothing but a front for the Mossad, find out where they're giving their money in your area and then verify what I already know because I've experienced this. I've videotaped these individuals. I know how they got into this town. I have inside information when it comes to this sort of thing. And it's just inside information of folks that were around during the, you know, during the 1970s when Phil Willato was dropped into the city of Richmond. He's the one that's stoking and fomenting all of this race war, ripping down the statues. They've been planning it for years. How do I know that? How can that be verified? I videotaped it. You know, many, many, many thousands of of people have seen it. It's been removed and and, uh, uh, archived on the internet. In, in a number of different places. But in any event, it wouldn't matter if I videotaped it and other folks archived it or, or how many tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of, of people have watched it. I know. I don't have to prove anything. I saw it with my own eyes. I don't have to prove anything. I saw it. And then many thousands of other people saw it. That's what they're doing. That's who this is. Hey, have y'all ever heard of somebody named Trey Songs? Anyone? Not me. Yeah, I know the um, the artist. Yeah, the artist? Okay. You know, I mean, uh, auto-tuning like horrible lyrics. Uh, That's not artistry. I'm, I'm sorry. But, uh, um, yeah, I, I don't know. So do y'all know his, his songs? I, I know he's in Richmond and I know that there is, uh, despite the barricades and everything, there is a music festival at the Lee monument, uh, tonight candlelight vigil with Trey songs and, uh, Ricky Davis. I think he was like, Played in the NBA. Um, uh, But anyway, it's, it's like, it's like they're, they, they used to have this thing called Friday cheers. I mean, up from, from the time I was a kid until this year is they canceled it. And they said, I don't think they're, they're going to keep doing it anymore. And I think it was mostly funded by 
like the beer distributors around here and it was a free concert um series outdoor concert series and then they had like the african american version of that that they had and what i'm saying now is that they're holding one of these events like a big one trey songs you just go out and see this individual for a candlelight vigil at the robert e lee monument for juneteenth i mean is this something that would take some planning, right? I'm thinking. I, I don't know. Because, like, basically, I never heard anything about Juneteenth. Then I saw Ralph Northam, who is the governor of Virginia, the member of the guy who, who, who wore blackface, who now thinks that the worst thing ever is, uh, uh, you know, uh, white people. Um and and guns and guns that's that's what's got to go guns and and white st- and statues of white people and he's got to denigrate white people constantly and uh and announce Juneteenth and so he announced it with the musician Pharrell Pharrell um i mean his music freaking sucks that is garbage garbage music Okay, so what does this, what do these guys have to do with Juneteenth? And all of a sudden there's a press conference and it's a state holiday. I can tell you, I talked to Jessica Collins today. She's having a rough time in Virginia Beach jail. She was very thankful to get away from that situation where, where um, they were hoarding razor blades and threatening her and that somebody who was in jail who's whose uh um uh father is a cop or has multiple family associations with police were were cutting the bed sheets into strips as they were threatening Jessica Collins the bed sheets into 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 strips is to tie individuals down um but in any event she was supposed to have a hearing today uh, through teleconference, uh, so she could get some sort of bail for her outrageous, uh, 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 imprisonment. She's a political prisoner. They're attempting to keep her quiet, um, uh, about especially Joe Biden, because Joe Biden, um, used, you know, trafficked her, not just inside the United States, but outside the United States through the DC madam. So they're attempting to keep her quiet about that. But in any event, she was supposed to have a hearing. She should be out until the appeal, even by their rules. She shouldn't be in there in the first place. She shouldn't be charged with a crime. Everybody on this channel has has uh, uh, has seen the videotape of the incident. And they 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 see that she was the victim of of the assault, not the other way around. And there was no way to prove that she was guilty of a DUI. And it seems she was drugged. We've been through this. We went through this time after time after time. Check the archives. I'm just saying, today, her hearing was canceled because of Juneteenth. That's not a freaking thing. Juneteenth is not a thing. I've known about it for years. Uh, it, it has to do with the Gulf Coast of Texas. That That's where they celebrate it. There was some, in, there, there was some interesting quotes where I live today. Like, it's like all of a sudden you get the, the, the uh, false flag of George Floyd, which is proven to be fake. All of a sudden, it's a national holiday. Now, please tell me how um, all my life, I and, and I, I know others on this call have experienced the same thing. Just trying to organize a, a, a backyard baseball gathering or trying to get young boys to come to a, 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 you know some kind of uh, – meeting where we're going to play sports, you know, as a kid. That was impossible. 
you know, young people are so disorganized and discombobulated that that's even a word, you know, mark me. So you're telling me that all of a sudden an entire network of individuals are all of a sudden organized to run the streets and come together over one guy that was allegedly peed to death over money? Okay. Okay. Good point. But I will tell you that what they're doing right now, okay, so that they're putting these advertisements on television. They're having recording artists come out and give free concerts. They're, they're reporting, and, and we, we cover this every week when we talk about these Ot poor canvas, you know, Mossad, CIA front uh, run organizations. What do they always, what do they always uh, emphasize? Carnival-like atmosphere, live music, dancing i mean i made a video earlier this week and um i think it got buried somehow uh clifford did you did you watch that one the one i put up on live leak anyhow um in 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 the video that's what we we were showing we were showing they were fomenting anger about the statues, about the monuments, the Confederate monuments, and they were emphasizing a carnival-like atmosphere at the new black monuments in the city. Um, there's the Arthur Ashe Monument, uh, the uh, Maggie Walker. She was some sort of like, uh, maybe she was part black. Um, uh banker <laughs> so basically in order to he got knocked off blog talk hey call back and and uh, um and david will put you back on uh uh unmute him um so okay make sure he's unmuted yeah Well, yeah, I mean I was I was asking about that, but also, you know, the the video I made where I emphasized the carnival like atmosphere for these events. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. Okay, so I was kind of I was kind of attempting to answer David's question about how how all these masses can gather in the street and it can happen quickly on a certain on a certain level just because I you know I mean, they advertise it on the news. If they were advertising free food at the grocery store, the grocery store would be mobbed. You know, I mean, and I would say less people, but a lot of people are interested in, you know, free entertainment. And especially after they've been locked up for so long, you know, with this coronavirus lockdown. So it's it's timing. There are there are a small number of organizers in comparison to the individuals that are being easily manipulated out on the street. Um, the, there's motivations for showing up. Yeah, they're going to show up. It's going to look like a big crowd. They're, they're going to conflate that into, oh, look at all these individuals. They want to rip these statues down. And this is cool for them to trash all, this thing that stands, you know, many white people in the South identify with and their ancestors, you know, fought for this cause and that we are interested in it. And we know too much information about the Civil War to uh, uh, allow these individuals to denigrate um, Robert E. Lee. Or Stonewall Thomas J. Stonewall Jackson, or Jeb Stewart, or any of these other individuals, because we know that that's not just an attack on them; that's an attack on our entire families, and it's an attack on us. And we know why, because this is part of the white genocide agenda. 
And we know why that is, because who's directing it? What bloodline is directing it? It is the Ashkenazi bloodline. And I can tell you why. Because the world has two choices. It's the people of God bloodline or the synagogue of Satan bloodline. That's it. That's how it goes. So you got those two choices. And so what they're doing now is all out war. And they're not going to be like, oh yeah, it's us, the Jews that are clamoring to destroy uh, Western civilization. Civilization that that originated in Ireland and then spread through the world. That's where civilization originated. We are the people of the Bible. We are ordained to be in charge, in, in position of authority. That I mean, and I'm not saying I believe that because like that's, it, it's just what is. That's the facts of the matter. So that's the choice. Chinese, they don't even run their own country. The Rothschild Jewish mafia runs their country. White, you know, Western European white people, they don't run this country. And I believe the last time it was ever close to that was during the Civil War. And we've already been through the fact that there were black Confederates and there were black slave owners. I mean, we go through this every week. Let, let, let's go through, let's go through the, the, the first, was it Charles Ellis? I mean, I, I'm so tired of having to remember all this stuff, especially after we already posted and talk about it time after time after time. But that's fine. That's what we'll do. Not now everybody. Is it, was it Anthony Johnson the first that set the precedent for uh, slip? The first one. The first. Were you referencing? Yeah, the first person owned slaves, black tobacco farmers. First person owned slaves in the American colony. Right. 1654, I believe. Yep, yep. Yep, 1654, Virginia. Northampton, Virginia, if I'm not mistaken. Um, What was that? Anthony Johnson again? He was of, of Angolan descent, and he was the first law to verify under law that it was that slavery was legal in the United States. That's just a fact. That's that set the precedent for for slavery in the United States. That's a fact. It's a fact. So so again, you know, not sticking up for slavery because it still exists and I'm fighting it now. I can't fight it right now. I can't fight right right now the slavery that existed 150 180 200 years ago. I can't, I can't I can't fight that slavery now. But this slavery that all individuals are are suffering from is what I cannot tolerate now what is unlawful now what is what is against God's law now so that's all I can do go ahead David trying to get individuals uh, well, the manipulation is if you sympathize with the southern cause or the southern struggle then you're taking up then you're taking up for slavery I mean I'm sorry it's not it is not our fault that people are ignorant to history about about they are they taught it wrong and it's and that's that's deliberate so once again I mean you God's people can be discriminated against because it's happening right now. They're, they're having an entire generation of kids being 
of prejudice to white people or black people in, in, in the black they have put it more accurately because of all the issues they caused but let's be specific david hold on hold on whoa because because the synagogue of satan and here's here's the thing the synagogue of satan they're white too i mean how many how many uh, uh synagogue of satan members are out there going yeah look hey look at this panel it's all white men and it's all synagogue of satan members so they say that they're white and that that's I don't know. I don't know exactly how this is, you know, you know, manifesting its itself. But that's the choice. That's what we're talking about. This is there's there's a legitimate authority on Earth, and there's an illegitimate authority that is running things now. Who who owns? And, and we'll just refer to them as synagogue of Satan. And then and then follow that up by saying, who who owns the banks? What what ethnic group is, are, are the Rothschilds a part of? They say they're they say they're white. They say they're white. Yeah, Jeffrey Epstein, white guy, white. So when we say white, we got to be specific because what they're doing is that that the the synagogue of Satan is using shock troops. The synagogue of Satan is using shock troops out on the street to attack the establishment of the United States. And I'll say, look, what the Western European or European uh, non-synagogue of Satan bloodline, they must always, we must always have a majority in this country. It's it's finished if if that's not the case. What's what's the purpose? It's all there and notice they're attacking every freedom at the same time and what they're not attacking any other group. The only group that's being attacked at this point are the are the uh the so-called western european white people. They're the only ones that are being attacked when everybody's freedom is being attacked uh, with with this lockdown uh, biological psyop or biological war targeting a certain percentage of the population. I don't believe I don't believe uh, uh, the the numbers. I believe maybe they're killing at a more rapid rate, but I don't believe it is so so called coronavirus that is killing individuals but in any any event they're attacking freedom of speech they're attacking this the right to uh, bear arms the god given right of self defense they're attacking the ability to uh, um uh associate with family friends or the public in general free association is gone and who are they attacking at this point? Who are they attacking? Are they attacking are they attacking, you know, the Chinese? Are they attacking Japanese? Are they saying, "Look at China. They don't have any diversity on their police force." The Communist Party in China? Look at the last convention. Do you see any diversity there? Damn Chinese are racist. Oh, the Japanese, they're so racist. Look at look at their rugby team. It only has three black guys on it. I mean, are, are they are they are they saying that about the Koreans? Are they saying that about the Iranians? Look at the racist Iranians. Are they saying that about the Saudi Arabians? Oh my gosh, look at the Saudi royal family. No black people, no Chinese people, no Latin X, whatever that is. I never heard of that before, like what, two weeks ago? That, that's supposed to be the gender kosher version of Latino, Latino. The, the gender war, psyop, transhumanism, the 
Okay. Okay. Okay, that... <laughs> you'll, you'll find Hispanic people and Israelites that are very against the Latinx agenda. I just, I'm saying I never heard of it, and now I'm seeing it everywhere. It's absurd, right? Right. I mean, it's a classic trick, David. Yeah, I know. It's a classic trick, right? That you know, poison the well of what's actually the problem by saying, "Oh, if you believe it's the Zionist bankers that are the problem, you must also be like this white trash, redneck, inbred crisis actor from the 1960s who also thinks they should bring back slavery." Um, yeah, classic trick, classic trick, you know, that's David Duke's whole career. career. Thank you. That's David Duke's whole career. So again, you you know, they can say David Duke is a CIA agent, Uh, Mossad, CIA, whatever. Um, you know, if you don't know that. If you didn't know that, now you know. And if you're unaware of that or doubt that, hey, <laughs> you can say stay stu- you know stupid a- as long as you wish. That's fine. It, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to me. I know. He okay, okay. Whoa, David. Let's get let's get exact here, because again, Donald Trump doesn't decide anything. Donald Trump does not decide anything. Right. We already established that when uh, um when we heard uh you know the lawyer that was part of the consortium. What was that guy's name? Uh, um, I'll think about it. But in any event. You know, represent, yeah, Pomerantz, um, uh, when he said, hey, Trump was worth more to us alive than dead. So he's talking about the president of the United States, like, hey, we can decide whether he lives or whether he dies. What does that mean? He's worth more to us alive than dead. So that means basically that they have, he has to do what they say or or they'll kill him. So at that point, if somebody who knows how the world works and uh, they start thinking, oh, damn, I'm really tired of this Donald Trump. Man, he he does whatever the, the uh, uh, Chabad Lubavitch Mafia tells him. So So we know that gangsters will kill each other over, I don't know, Fifty thousand dollar, you know, debt. Donald Trump was into these guys for billions. So what? For billions, gangsters, for fifty thousand, 
they'll whack somebody, but for billions, they'll just go like, eh, we'll make them, we'll make them the guy that's $4 billion in debt to us. We'll make him our boss. <laughs> I, I mean, is this, is this funny to y'all too? I mean, it's funny that, that folks believe that. Am I, am I right? Yeah, they're paying him. You're right. They're playing him to, pe- to play and pose like he is. Right. But I'm saying like, who, who would believe this stuff? Like who would believe, who believes that Donald Trump is like the boss? I mean, they're baiting folks out there. I was, somebody who's watched too much. I mean, it's a funny show, but you know, it's like, it's fake you know you know behind the scenes that this is pre-decided everything has to do with ratings there's a director of the show i mean yeah i guess i I was watching the cnn reporter wearing a mask in front of uh, um a bunch of trump supporters in tulsa oklahoma uh, they, they had it staged. So the only thing you could see in the fir- opening camera angle from the on-scene reporter is CNN fake news. And then, uh, it says enemy of the people. And then this guy's getting heckled by every, you know, yokel and Yahoo there is imaginable. Like if that's all I knew about like white, white, uh, uh individuals, I mean, no offense. I'm, I'm really joking. By watching clips like that on CNN, I would be really racist against white people as well. But, you know, it's a, it's a trick. Like, if you don't know that, then you're tricked. If, you know, you, and your whole life is based on believing a trick. I mean, so, you know, I, I was talking to a family member last night. And I start... Attempting to explain, hey, this is a synagogue of Satan bloodline. You see, they run everything. They're not Semitic. They're not from that region. Uh, they're all from Europe. That's, you know, I, I guess that has something to do genetically with, with so-called whiteness, even though white people have, were spread around the world and, and, and had, you know, the they find the the uh, caves in China of the you know royalty of that region from thousands of years ago, and they find their you know uh, ritualistic cannabis, and they say, oh, these people had had fair skin, blue eyes. They were Indo, you know, quote unquote Indo European in a- North Africa, uh, around the world, around the world. But it is associated with Europe, although our DNA originates in Ireland even thousands of years ago. It can be found in ancient Egypt, in ancient China, etc. But these so-called synagogue of Satan bloodlines, they are exclusive to, to Europe and certain parts of Anatolia, east, you know, uh, uh, I, I guess the western part of, you know, uh, what the area now that's that's uh, Turkestan. They call it Turkey. You know, you could call it Turkestan, Turkmenistan, the Turkey, the Republic of Turkey, and and so we know about bloodlines. We know about where they came from, where they originated, where they went, all that stuff. So we can be specific, but folks don't recognize that. They can be tricked by the synagogue of Satan members bemoaning whiteness and saying, I can say that because I'm a white guy, but they're not. So I was talking, you know, and, uh, and, um, and saying like, hey, yeah, you're not. I hope you're not taking that stuff seriously that's on TV right now. They're really pumping up a lot of rhetoric. And yes, I'm very upset about the direction Trump is taking this country. 
And I said, you sound crazy when you talk like that. Don't do that. Don't say that to people. You sound crazy. You know, Donald Trump, you know, I start saying like, Donald Trump is an actor. All the presidents are actors. Donald Trump is compromised. That's what they do. That's what these intelligence agents, agencies do. And then he says, well, the intelligence agencies are run by a Republican oligarchy. And I said, now you sound even crazier. Do you even know what those words mean? Oligarchy. Yeah. Who's telling you this? And he says, Chris, I'll let you know a little bit about what I'm reading right now. Never heard this individual talk to me like this before. Sounds ridiculous. I'm, I'm reading the new book by Robert Wright. I was like, yeah, well, that's exactly what I'm talking about. I was like, yeah, synagogue of Satan propaganda, synagogue of Satan bloodline. Robert Wright. Certainly, certainly. And, and and I remember I used to see uh, um, uh, Robert Reich and, and Conan O'Brien used to used to have a recurring, uh, um, you know, uh, skit that they would do uh, on the Conan O'Brien late night show uh, when it was on NBC. Um, so this is an actor. And. Um, and also it gets worse because. <laughs> the you know this family member excuse me says well that's a german sounding name and i'm like yeah well isn't that what they do isn't that what they do like you know a lot most of 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 the prototype uh or at least many of the prototype so-called jewish surnames are german and I said, well, I mean, that's what they do. Look at John Stewart. His name isn't John Stewart. It's John Leibowitz. You know, and and uh, um, and I'm like, all right, look, you got every excuse for being wrong. I'm like, either you're right or you're wrong. Either this guy is synagogue of Satan bloodline, or he's not. I'm like, I know he is. Well, I believe you if you if you know he is. And, and it's like every step of the way, it's just this way of of deflecting, not not questioning, um, not not addressing the real issue about what's going on. It's like, yeah, it sounds good. It sounds good to to someone you know striving for affluence who keeps getting his you know. Uh, uh, you know, familial wealth stolen by courts of law, you know, uh, corrupt uh, uh, officials that happen to be family members and, 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 and so forth and so on. To, to go like, hey, I can't recognize the difference between a white, a white person and a Jew. I mean, that's the real issue. Agents of, of many different views and phenotypes 
I again think back to the Milo, Milo Giannopoulos great fourth guy up. I mean, he, I mean, he looks is able to give himself, I would say, more of a weapon. Can your team look dyed his hair? That's the thing they do. When you see him with his regular color hair, it's a little more obvious. Right. So, and, but again, I think, like, well, well, let's look at what this, so we have this, this Catholic gay Jew. He, he admits he's a Jew by their, by their so-called Talmudic rules. His mother, that's Jewish, so. And he's, of course, with the, the whore of Rome. He's a member of that. And he's a homosexual, and he, he allegedly had a fetish for black men, and he's being called a white supremacist. And that <laughs> is what these mind controlled individuals in Berkeley are calling him. And then I, I, a black man, says, hey, this is all just a game. This is a style. And the, uh, then the police are obviously staging this. And I did a follow up video saying, this is what I witnessed. They had Asians in the crowd with masks on right. before the coronavirus. So these hooligans with masks up way before this new president. And they were they were directing individuals as to not be near the fire in order to so there wouldn't be any liability. So right. Yeah. Mayhem and get, make a good movie. Make a good movie, yeah. Start a fire, keep everybody away from I mean Right. So. Well, there you go. There you go. Yeah. Same with uh, uh, with Hulk Hogan and uh, Andre the Giant. They both uh, had the same guy signing their checks. So, um, there you go. But hey. They were arch rivals, and they hated each other, and uh, um, they were really trying to uh, beat the other guy in something that was not completely predetermined. Speaking of Donald Trump, professional wrestling, I mean, I don't know how many times that it has to be rubbed in everybody's face when when they get upset at this at this uh, uh, you know insult comic clown um, uh, Donald Trump. I mean, and and I, I'm saying like, you know, if, if I were to just go with the rhetoric that I'm hearing, I would definitely choose Donald Trump over over uh, Joe Biden. However, it's all fake, you know. Just like, you know, most most uh, folks liked uh, Hulk Hogan over Andre the Giant, and then, you know, maybe at some point, vice versa. Whenever the script called for either thing. Folks can be like very easily manipulated by a script. I mean, have you ever cried at a movie? There you go. You can be manipulated. Have you ever laughed at a movie? Right, yeah, everything's the religion of the stars. So, as almost every every important event is going to fall within, so, you know, either by design or or just by 
by uh, happenstance. It's going to happen on a important, uh, you know, astrological in in uh, in coincidence with an important astrological event. So absolutely, yeah, that's the that's the way it always is. Very important, though. First thing I thought of was, wow! Not only they're mocking us, but that's that's intellectual murder, getting you to praise a date that's coded with a racial slur. Yeah, that's what they that's what they love to do. Yeah, it's it's their mockery, and also, here's the thing: um, Juneteenth is is not a word. It's it's like a bastardization of of English. It's it's like it's not you know, it's not proper English, and it's you know it just seems like they're mocking us with this like downgrading of of society, you know, and like who who is it that like you know, I would say that they're probably going to have a pretty big crowd. We'll see at 11 o'clock tonight out there at the Robert E. Lee Monument for a 7.30 candlelight vigil. Who Who is who is bringing us this? At least in Virginia where it seems like w- this was the first place that they're, that they're like outside of Texas that they're like pushing like really hard for this Juneteenth thing. Pharrell and Trey Songs and some rapper I've never heard of. And some basketball player I've barely heard of. So, I mean, that's it. It's like, it's not some individual that's accomplished a lot of great things. It's not the somebody who did Doctors Without Borders in freaking Somalia or wherever else. It's a military mind control agent and all of the popular music is for that and this guy trey songs he already has a george floyd song out or uh i can't breathe or some garbage like that so it's all a big freaking mockery and again i saw uh somebody post something a while ago saying they're having a hard time hearing the the blog talk link is is on is in the comment section. So you you can, you can find the link in the comment section here or on Instagram and you can, you can click on the link and you'll be able to hear uh, everyone better. If you can't hear them well here uh, on, on the Facebook live broadcast. So you can listen and watch or just listen or just watch and listen on Facebook live or Instagram or wherever you're doing that. Cause we're we're all, we're we're broadcasting this as widely as we can, so uh, they they have. It. I mean this this stuff is getting ridiculous. It's it's military mind control and the just complete degradation of. I mean, what's the point? Like either either it's like this. White people, if if you think this is going to get better, it's not going to get better. They're not gonna. They're not gonna start, you know, pointing out that that uh, you know white people are you know built this country and it was colonization uh, of European countries for a certain purpose. We are a Christian nat- nation, not not uh, you know multicultural. It was that was not the intention of the founders of this country to have a multicultural melting pot and that that uh that generally does not work as far as having a successful society and that all the other countries of the world are not being forced into this not yet at least um and uh it's when there is an attack on on life as we know it on planet earth 
the only ethnic group that are attacked are specifically Western European or uh, those of of certain DNA haplo groups. Um, not all whites, because uh, the Jewish people are acting as if they're being attacked now. So they are equal victims, co-victims with black people and whoever else is around that's that's uh, uh, that's also victimized. So that that's that's what's going on. And it's not going to get better. So because, again, if. attacks on everyone actually happen when they give us the fake one. When they start doing that, you don't be surprised when you start seeing a, a plethora of Jewish crisis actors. You don't be surprised when they throw that into the story. Oh, the attack they give out was white and Jewish. But oh, so just everyone get ready for that. No, it's coming. It's already here. Certainly. Certainly. It, it is. It, it is already. It is already here. Um, they're already doing it, but look for an increase. I mean, we already, how many times have we already had the, I can't breathe. How many, how many times have we already had the take a knee? I mean, so the new one is white people kissing black people's boots. Um, that, that folks are waiting in line, uh, kneeling down in front of black people asking for forgiveness, uh, et cetera, et cetera. It's not going to get better until in in unless unless we say no way because they're saying oh tim kane he's he's famous for saying this when i can't wait it's going to be a great time when white people are a minority no all there's no hope for the world the world might as well you know just just uh, uh pack it in at at the point where if that were to ever happen um But see, they're pushing it. So when they're saying that this is going to happen, that that the white, the so-called Western European or white majority will be gone in the United States of America, what do you think that means? That means that they're targeting you for genocide, that you're going to disappear. The same thing in the UK. I mean, I, I'm I'm seeing stuff on on uh, uh, on my news feed saying they they're having problems with African gangs in Ireland. Nah, you guys gave up your guns too early. I mean, uh, and and that's that's not going to be the case. Hello. Hey. Yeah, I'm still on. Okay. That was strange. I just heard like a, like it sounded like a, just a, like a sharp dial tone. And then, uh, um, anyway, so getting, getting back to the, to the fact of the matter is they're replacing you. White people, they're, they're replacing you. So if you're cool with that, then, then like, yeah, it's 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 gonna happen. I'm not I'm not okay with that. That's not that's not the way, you know, God intended things. And also, it's gonna turn everything to crap and to garbage. So I don't know why, other than the obvious, the you know, the the end game for the you know protocols of the learned elders of Zion and the end game for the Rothschild Ma- Chabad mob uh UN agenda 21 bank for international settlements all you know they're the major players so that's it it's as simple as that there's a choice the world has um no no hope for anyone life being 
you know, not worth living under the current synagogue of Satan regime or the people of God take over their rightful authority and be the true stewards of the planet. Is somebody doing that on, on this call? Anyway, um, that, that dial tone, is anybody else hearing that? Okay. Okay. I I presume it's coming through on on the on the uh, on the Facebook Live because I can hear it audibly, and I can hear myself audibly. So, um, I presume that this. Uh. Anyway, it's not that big of a deal. Uh. But. But in any event, um. Yeah, it's 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 uh yeah, it's it's really upsetting. Um Yeah, a lot of folks are in denial. Yeah, Joe and uh uh Judy, it is very upsetting. But it's it's the it's the facts of the matter. So to me it's it's better to be aware. Put the put things out there so so the public is aware so they don't like what the hell is going on? How the hell did this happen? Um, let's see. Yeah. Okay. We went over the um the fact that we're broadcasting, so that the sound may be better on one out uh outlet in, instead of this Facebook. I don't know. Doing our best on all of them. Yeah. Agree. Hey, greetings, Richard. Um. Yeah, I agree, Matthew Collins. So yeah, hey, thanks for comments. Thanks for clicking like. Thanks for sharing. Um, so uh, yeah, it's it's a real crying shame, and and uh, it did it again. So I don't know what that is. I mean, in scripture, God clearly says that His people will be destroyed for a lack. What does that knowledge really mean? I mean, it's not just, uh, but it's not just because you know you don't have knowledge of, of some biblical story or metaphor. It's because you don't, you don't have knowledge about your surroundings. You have no idea. I mean, not us, Paul, obviously, but his these people have have no idea that they're being identified. They have no idea that they're that they're they're being. Not just they're being replaced with, you know, with well, let, let's say some a normal uh, person of another race, uh, and they're being replaced with the worst, the worst of uh, of all walks of society. And once again, you know, on, we we always we always say that you know we despise the handiwork of God's creation in the in the sixth within itself, but the average person. Judges somebody on the content of their character. Well, I mean that's that's what should be done, I would say. Um, and uh, I mean, there's every factor must be considered, in my opinion. So, right. what I see here is is just the obvious replacement agenda, and. Uh, it's, it seems very strange to, um, coincide. Well, here's what, what I say, Judy, you know, um, to me, we, we've been, we've been doing this. I've been doing this for a, 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 about 20 years now, maybe a little less than 20 years as far as organizing, political organizing, realizing that there's something wrong with the world in every sort of way and doing everything I can to destroy my enemies, which are making it that way. Um, what we're doing now is we're organizing through a church. Uh, go to people-of-god.com and become a member. Um, and uh, and we're Clifford and I are working on, I, I guess at least we've been discussing, 
I, sh I should say, not to, you know, aggrandize more what we're doing. Uh, we wish to organize a online university where we teach everyone what to do, where we give out um, specialized, uh, unique intelligence about who's behind this, why are they behind that, and how to counteract it. I can tell you that, that organizing is, is mostly a waste of time because what, what we end up organizing is maybe one or two legitimate individuals combined with maybe 25 or 30 government agents that are there to sabotage what we're doing. So that's my experience. And I have a lot of it. And my, I, I don't, you know, I'm not interested in following anyone. I'm not interested in, in looking at someone else's news information or listening to what any other individual has to say because I, I, it's, it's like, um, it would be like, uh, you know, uh, Nolan Ryan having a little leaguer uh, tell him how to throw a fastball. I mean, I guess that's a little dated reference. So I'm just not, I'm just not interested in that. Organizing is we organize through a church. Why do we organize through a church? Because God creates man and man creates government. And so we put that before any criminal, satanic government that is engaged in nothing but fraud, treason, murder, uh, mayhem, genocide, whatever. They do it all. So we organize through a church because our covenant is, is public. You know, we, we have it prominently uh, displayed on the website. And so that's how we organize. We wish to educate uh, people in an online university. I mean, I, I learn, I learn so much more from reading books when I was, you know, running a free library out of out of my uh, uh, out of my out of the store that that an LLC created owned that I I created owned. Um, then then my entire time in school. So, Chris, we have a if you want to take. Uh, let's. What, what's the number? I mean, give it a, give it a short leash because I don't want somebody just screaming obscenities or doing anything like that. What, what's the number? Uh, it's a it's a seven three two area code. I promise. I'll uh I'll make sure we're on top of this one. So okay. You know when, All right. When yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, uh, 732 caller, uh, welcome to the people of God. Uh, yeah, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hello, hello. Thank you so much. Uh, Rick from New Jersey. Uh, greetings, Rick. Uh, yeah, what's on your mind tonight? Greetings to you, too. I'm actually, I'm actually on your website right now, uh, and I'm looking at the book. I'm like, oh, I can get that on Amazon. That'd be pretty good. Yeah, please do. Please do, yeah. Uh, um, we oh, no, I definitely. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Anything you'd like to add, you know, feel free. Uh, you have the floor. Uh, I know. I, I just had actually a question. I, I couldn't add to, uh, to it because you, you pretty much explained everything exactly the way that it should be explained. But uh, I was having a conversation uh, two nights ago and also tonight with people about the drop down in the uh, actual family nuclear family like the, the the father the wife and the children sure yeah yeah i think and that yeah nobody's willing to nobody's willing to admit that, that is a drop and that's what's happening with this uh chaz or whatever, whatever the hell they're calling him now they changed their name oh they did okay yeah Chaz, yeah we, we are gonna we are gonna get into that uh but yeah to address address I your statement I, yeah I, go I, ahead I,
I'm sorry? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We try not to not to use any anything that could get us in any you know okay, well, no, any I'm trouble. That wasn't me. That was my dog. Okay, well, fair enough. Um, yeah. I, I, I had I had an argument with people because they said, well, no, uh, strong strong men and, and women and strong children can all overcome everything. And I said, well, no, the original decline of Christian civilization in this country was the decline of the American family nuclear family. The, you meet somebody and you fall in love and you, you know, you make a couple of babies and you stick through it no matter what. You stand by your, you stand by your decision. And people refuse to do that. Now, feminism, which I understand is a, is a soft topic, they claim that you don't have to. You don't need to be a cat mom or a dog mom or be a single mom. You can do whatever you want. You don't need a family. That's what's broken down Christianity in this country. I disagree. I, 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 listen, listen. Hey, all right. Okay, I disagree. I mean, honestly, because, um, you know, what? what's the per- – I think what we didn't cover – and I don't disagree that, that that wasn't how it was attacked, but what kind of idiots would bring children into this world to turn them over to the government, to have them indoctrinated, to have them pumped full of uh, uh, vaccines? To have them be a slave in their own land. Yeah, that, that is, you do have you do have good points on that. That's so so yeah, yeah and 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 we we have idiocracy going on. Murder children, and there were more of them. There'd be less government. I I don't I mean there. I do agree with you. Yeah, well, it's because yeah, I mean I think I think through these things, and it's not I don't just uh, you know jump on like one one kind of thought process. Yeah, it's definitely they've attacked the family. That's certainly the, the I mean, oh, no, no, right. I, I'm not saying you did. I'm just saying, I, I yeah, things are always thought through. Um, yeah, I, I definitely believe that. Now, if, we, if, we had, if we had, if we had, if we had actual families, like, just, just like legitimate families in this country, there would be none of this going on. I disagree. I disagree. Mothers, fathers, or more. My my mother and my father they were together and and uh, um my uh my siblings and my parents are brainwashed into following this criminal satanic government 95 to 98% of the people i know uh are in the same boat they had a mother and a father in their lives so ninety eight percent of the individuals that I know listen These kids that li- are moving, listen not, to me a, listen to me listen family. to me I got the floor now okay so they it, like the I will tell you that that Chaz place that's that's nothing you know they did that in every single freaking town in the United States and most towns in Europe during the Occupy movement it's nothing now. There's more media scrutiny. They're covering. So, so again, I don't, I don't really know what I, I don't disagree with what you're saying in principle, but it really is just not as relevant as other things. Because again, everyone I know there, you know, had a mother and a father in their lives. I really don't know anyone who, who did not. And, and listen, I'm not done talking. Do you understand Robert's rules of order? No, we're talking together, brother. No, we're not talking together. That's not how this works. Um, but that's not, that's what you're doing and you're out of order. So, so in any event. I'm in court. No, we're talking together. Listen, 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 listen. Do, do you listen to what I'm saying to me? Listen, no, listen. What is your problem, dude? You're out of order. You're out of order. You're out of order. You're out of order. This is not your show. I don't even know what your name is. No, it's not a court term. It's a it's a parliamentary term. Yes, it is out of order. You're out of order. Parliamentary term. Are, are you deaf? Are you deaf, man? Are you deaf? Are you deaf? 
Are you just not listening? Are you deaf or are you? I think the problem is that you're talking over me. And when I say Robert's rules of order, and then you're talking over me, and then I repeat Robert's rules of order, and then you make some sort of stupid comment about being in court, and I'm telling you, this is how we conduct this show. How many times? I, I really didn't know what that meant. That's fine. Then, then you're not qualified to talk over me. Then you're not qualified to talk over me. And you're not qualified to repeat a wrong statement over and over again. That makes you out of order. So, you're so in of me. I'm in control of the meeting. I'm in control of the broadcast. Do you call your local television station and just go like, hey, put me on. I'm going to talk. Okay, I'm just explaining things to you. And you're arguing. So I'm explaining them. Am I yelling? Hey, hey, Clifford, David, Clifford, David, uh, listen, am I yelling? No. You say I'm yelling. I mean, this, this is why nothing will ever, will ever get any better. This is why, all right, we're done with that caller. Um, this is why nothing will ever get, will, will, will never get better in, until things change so much. Some guy who's hopped up on one idea, hasn't thought it through completely, but, but, but wishes to argue. And, and first it's like, well, I didn't, I didn't hear you say Robert's rules of order. Well, I said it twice. Well, I don't know what Robert's rules of order is. Okay. Well, this is what it is. It go, you know, it's parliamentary procedure. And then I say parliamentary procedure. Does this guy not go like, oh, oh, it's court and parliamentary procedure and basically anything with a structure one can be out of order in. He doesn't go like, oh no. He repeats back, a court. We're not in court. You're in control of me? No, I'm in control of the broadcast because yeah, it can't. Yeah, this guy, of course. Of course, this guy's a plant. Of course, this guy's is, uh, uh, is, you know, is making, you know, underhanded attacks against what we're doing here and, and et cetera. Of course. Of course, I recognize that. Of course. Yeah, I mean, when you're out of order, you speak to God. Unless somebody of more authority can speak. Now, see, Chris, this goes right back to uh, what we stated last week. I remember I brought up, uh, like, we don't respect everybody's opinion because not everybody is smart enough or of a high intellect or of a high standing to be able to really. How about this? How about this? How about the word, David? How about the word, most persons are not informed enough to have a relevant opinion on what it is that we're speaking about. I love it. Right, because, like, I, this is, this is it. Yeah, I'm with, I'm with Clifford. I'm with you, David. I don't think that that was an accidental call. I think that, you know, they really, like, go with, like, you know, it's like the, the nuclear family. I'm like, man, my fa- my entire family is so brainwashed. And they were always around, each, you know, they were always around. They, mom, dad. Yeah, because because again, classic. That's the classic. Oh, we just need to go back to a particular time period when 
we had less brainwashing. How about we go back to where there's no brainwashing and that and God's law rules, plain and simple. Uh, again, we're 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 gonna do what we can. I, I I'd like to you know put it out there to the to the public. You know we're we are interested in setting up a curriculum, and this would be a curriculum for the people of God. It wouldn't just be a membership, you know, into the people of God, which I, I don't know what else anyone would wish to be like a member of any organization because this is documenting that it is your religious belief that you have power and authority over government that you believe in in uh, uh in biblical uh text and and uh uh biblical philosophy and basically just rationalism and and western european philosophy that has that has been a part part of the culture of the world and has kept the order in the world for the past for all time until very recently um and it you know i'm going back centuries and and maybe even you know certain areas we fought wars in order to in eastern europe the the kievan rus fought fought wars to defeat the khazars and and so we know what history is and we're going to set up a curriculum I, i'd love to hear if, if folks are interested in this i mean it my my dad <laughs> he worked for this thing called virginia college which was it had several campuses. I believe most of them were in strip malls. And uh, um, and uh, uh, basically, folks paid thousands and thousands of dollars to get a really bad education. And then last year, this Virginia college just closed down. Right before folks were supposed to graduate, Right after they sent their money in for tuition, they closed up shop, they locked the doors, and they pocketed the money. So if they're accepting that as a college and university, Trump University, look at that garbage. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's true, Judy. Also, Descartes, Locke, Jefferson, um... Uh, Voltaire. I mean, the list goes on and on and on and on and on. You know, uh, um, so so we wish to really educate individuals, but we don't just wish to give it away for free and have have these folks be able to waste our time on broadcasts like this. So just what we just wish to put it out there. We're gonna we're gonna start um, we're gonna start doing that. I mean. We both have experience, um, and uh, yeah, I mean we're we're there to educate the public and organize through separation from this society. I mean, what what happens if somebody like you know, uh, like uh, like goes in, in, into your neighbor's yard? And starts like you know throwing trash all over the place and uh, uh, and kicking in the windows and uh, um, you know pouring manure all over the front and the backyard and they go, well, hey man, like um, what's going on here? You just say like, well, hey, I, I'm separating myself from that. I didn't have anything to do with that. That's what they're doing, like. Trash in the Robert E. Lee monument in Richmond. Man, I, I, I attempted to stop them. I went out there with a gun years ago and exposed all these, all these individuals, the organizations that were funding them, the government officials that were working with them, those in charge. You know, I, I stood behind special agents in charge of the FBI with a gun, interrogating them and heckling them at the same time. And they had to take it because it's, lawful 
And again, nobody else is educated enough to do that. No one else has the standing enough to do that. And I shall explain why and how. And your membership in the church gives you authority, not just over all government, but over all other human beings. Because we've separated ourselves from everyone else, and everyone else gives their authority to a piece of paper, a two-dimensional creation of man called the federal government, or the Bank for International Settlements, or the Federal Reserve Bank, or the United Nations. We have authority over them. We have standing over them. And everyone else besides us is capitulating to those criminal organizations. So therefore, membership in, in the, uh, in the uh, People of God Church gives you legitimate, legitimate authority over all others. All other beings, uh, all other beings, uh, um, you know, recompense. Um, you have authority over them all. And we explain why. Because they have given their authority, they have given their God-given rights away to the synagogue of Satan and, and the, the, uh, um, the uh, Bank for International Settlements and the United Nations and the United States federal government, these corporate fictions. You don't have to do that. There's another way. Separate yourselves from that. The only way to do that officially is through the people of God church. All other ways to do that, they fall short. They don't have the authority. Um, it's simple as that. So that would be the way to organize. Go go ahead. Go ahead, Cliff. Yeah, so Yeah, me too. Me too. I mean I remember I once I once heard Clifford say that uh that it these are the way things are because it it can't be no other way. There's no like hey guys, there's three or four different paths we can choose and let's try to debate on which one will which one will be the most prosperous. There's only one prosperous Yeah, that's right. I mean, no one else is saying ban usury 100% and the death penalty for usury. But that's that's biblical scripture. We're saying that. We're saying capital punishment for usury. So, again, membership is is it's a legal document. The covenant of God is a legal document and it's 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 more important than any other legal document because it's between man and his creator, the creator of all things. And when I say man, I mean male and female, the male and female form of man. So there you go. I mean, I, I don't know what else anyone can do. Nothing else has any authority. We're, I'm interested in property. I'm not interested in, in, in money. Money is the vehicle to get the 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 property but we we stake claim over everything everything this you know becoming a member of the people of god church is like a legitimate unum sanctum it's it's the legitimate unum sanctum so that papal ball that uh that uh boniface or uh, whatever the fake name the guy the guy used uh to create unum sanctum that's meaningless. That that whore of Rome, that's meaningless stuff. You know, that they, they keep saying here in Richmond, oh, these guys in the Confederacy, they were traitors. And they they lost. Did they? My ancestor, uh, Edward W. Dorsey, he was he fought in the so-called the predecessor of what became the Stonewall Brigade, the second Virginia cavalry. So, uh, it never ended. So 
don't don't think you beat somebody until until like they're gone completely and we're not gone we haven't stopped fighting are you kidding we don't agree with anything that this united states government stands for it's all illegitimate we don't abide by those rules we're above that and that's what the that's what the confederacy was saying that and 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 look at the look at the um Look at the battle flag, the cross of St. Andrew. Why? Well, because of, because of the ethnic background of many of the, of the Confederate soldiers. That's why Freemasonry here is called Scottish Rite, because all Freemasonry is about serving the, the, the legitimate monarch. That's what it, that's all what it's all about. It's not about Baphomet or you know being controlled by. Jew- I mean, that's what it is now. These guys are satanic. They they like to transform, but it's just a in its original form. It is it is a 